Hey everybody, this is Adam Broad of Liberation Wellness Republic. I coming to you from the Voluntary Virtues Network. Kind of not really. I'm going to be uploading this after I edit out everything that I want to edit and play with here. I'm actually recording this on my channel. I actually am enjoying this Google Plus thing now for some reason, and I'm sick of doing the Skype audio shit because nobody watches that stuff. You walk away after two seconds of realizing it's not video. Anyways, I've got the wonderful and beautiful gentleman of The Atlantic Bromance, an up-and-coming YouTube sensation. They're gamers. They've basically just played Portal 2 and DayZ right now, but I know they're going to branch out on other games here in the future. We actually, uh, if I can just interrupt you, we actually yeah. just put out our first episode of uh, uh, Aperture Tag, the Paint Gun Testing Initiative, which is a Portal 2 mod. So and it is we do badass. have another series coming out. It is spectacular. So you guys already know Chuck. He's the Liberty Geek here on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Matt, why don't you do us a favor, introduce yourself, any political history, any kind of theories that are running up in that gorgeous head of yours. Uh, hi, I'm Matt. No real theories, and I don't really do anything. I'm just kind of here for the ride. Well, I, I tell you, I, I edit for the Atlantic Bromance, and uh, my only view on politics is that uh, it should never be run by the one percenters because they don't know what it's like to live middle class. So... Get the uh, the average show running the country. That's what I say. You're gonna you're gonna Good love thing. us. You're gonna love us, Matt. Yeah, we think nobody should run anybody. But yeah. uh, burr, 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 burr. yep, yay, anti state. Uh, okay. By the end of this episode, Matt, you'll be converted to us. And what is what is us? What's your ideology? Uh, ideology? I am a voluntarist slash anarcho capitalist. Anarchy and capitalism. Yeah, basically. Well, no, the, um, Fuck the government. Let's make money. Yeah. Pretty Let's much, make money yeah. without them telling us what to do about it. Exactly. All right. And what anarcho-capitalism is really focused around is what's called the non-aggression principle. It's basically, I call it the don't be a dick principle uh, when I'm just talking with everyday people. They get it. It's you don't, you don't kill people. You don't assault people. You don't steal from people. You don't you know, defraud anybody. And you don't uh, use coercion against them. You know, so long as you don't do any of that, and as long as you're respecting property rights, then life's good. You can go and have your hookers. You can do your drugs. Uh, you can get your abortions if you know it is shown that it is actually a violation of the non-aggression principle. I don't know. That's a conversation for another day. Yes, but, definitely a conversation for another day. Yeah, a big conversation for another day. But the, the whole idea is that we should have the freedom to not only use all of what we earn monetarily... Because, I mean, why the fuck should we be stuck with, you know, only using and being able to use, what, about 10%, 20% of our income, really, after we factor in sales taxes, value-added taxes, and income taxes, and sewer taxes, and, and this tax, that tax, everything. And tax, Matt tax. is British. Don't forget bedroom tax. Oh, yeah, don't even get me started on bloody bedroom taxes. Bloody hell. See, as an anarcho-capitalist, we would say, that's dumb. I'm now, English, and I'm saying that's dumb. Exactly, but that's what I'm but, saying. Now do you understand where we come from, maybe? Yeah, but unfortunately, we're a very politically stable country where it's like, man, we really don't like that. I might write a letter about it later, though. <laughs> well, it's, English it's, people are like, what is revolt? Isn't that thing that Americans did to us however long ago? I can't remember. Well, it's, interesting, write a letter. it's interesting that you say politically stable, uh, because everything that I see is... You know, governments running deficits. You know, all governments are running deficits, which you know means that you are enslaving uh, the unborn and the young people of the nation uh, to whatever the debt is at the time, and that's going to continue to grow. What uh, I mean by politically stable is they know we're not going to do shit about it, or we'll protest for a while, but they realize they can sit in the parliament and whatever, and realize that we have to get back to our lives in a week or so. Okay, so. That uh, probably a better way to put it is you guys are essentially beat into subservience because you realize, hey, I've got more important things, you know, like my daily life and the everyday anarchy that I live because uh, you don't have the government telling you, you know, what steps to take, what shirt to put on, or who to fucking Not yet. To. You live with what's called, or Stefan Molyneux calls, everyday anarchy. Uh, you know, how often do you have the government tell you what you need and need not do in a day? I argue mm -hmm. very, very little. So, just a thought to run through that, that mind of yours. So before he forgets, I'm going to introduce myself, Adam. <laughs> oh, I said everybody already knows you. 
I know, but um, for <laughs> two or three people that don't know me, hi, I'm Chuck the Liberty Geek, as I'm known here on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I have a show called Liberty Geek, ironically. Not really. Um, Friday nights, 9 to 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, p.m., and uh, basically my show on the Voluntary Virtues Network is uh, Nerd Culture Meets Anarchy. And on the flip side, I am also a a host for um, the Atlantic Bromance. And while Matt does the recording and editing and the YouTube side of things, I manage the behind-the-scenes stuff. So I'll manage our tags um, sometimes. Uh, I manage the Facebook. I manage the Twitter when I make that in a couple days. Um, you know, stuff like that. So behind the scenes stuff that he can't be bothered with, you know. So uh, he makes the movie magic, I make the marketing magic almost. Is that fair well, to say, Matt? Uh, yeah, yes. well, I, know. I just can't be bothered arguing with you. <laughs> well, if, you ask, if you ask Matt, I don't do anything at all, but screw you, Matt. That sounds about right. No, though. You, you, no, I make the videos, I edit the videos, I do all the recording. Uh, I do all the YouTube side of stuff, and you go on Facebook and say, hey, we did this. <laughs> and I show up and make the and, video. And you fun. show up. And you're a louder personality than I am, and I, I couldn't do it on my own, absolutely. <laughs> Matt's personality is like, look, look at the little zombie. Or I'm just like, holy shit, it's a zombie, I'm gonna die! Ah! Well, I gotta say, being a fan of uh, SSOH PKC and or otherwise known as Seamus uh, from the Creatures and uh, people like Ray Nervea Jr. or Brown Man from uh, Rooster Teeth, I really appreciate kind of more the quieter Let's Players who are just like, oh, that's oh, funny. fuck you, Adam. And you're, you're a little bit more sarcastic, <laughs> which is what I love. I mean, I love the loud people, too, like Uber Hacks or Nova, and I hate PewDiePie, but, you know, we're not going to get into that fun little... Don't forget, he won a again. Teen's Choice Award. Well, I mean, good for him. That's awesome. I mean, that's that is a proud accomplishment to have for somebody of his stature. I mean, it really is. For someone of a fan base of like twelve-year-olds. Well, yeah, but <laughs> you know, hey, that's something that he's got over anybody else uh, in the industry. So you know, cool, good for him, good for you. The market will sort you out one day. Yep. So yeah, so that's us. I've known Matt for about almost twelve years now. Um, I met him online. I uh. Obviously, via because he lives in England. Match. Yeah, we met via Match.com, and uh, <laughs> no, we found we had similar interests, and uh, just and we just started dating. You know, it was yeah. just it was a really great long distance relationship, and um, and I can't wait to marry him next month. No, actually, ironically, of all places, we met on a Star Fox fan website. God, those were the days, right? Don't Star Fox, me. interesting. So mm -hmm. what were it, was it like Star Fox 64 or? Uh, for me it was Star Fox 64. For me it was Adventures. I loved Adventures. Man, Star People Fox 64 is the mostly. only one, man. Come on now, 64 is the best ever. Will 64 be. 64 is great, but you know, Adventures has that crystal hotness. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> I still nah. think it's better than Lollycon. No, nah, I'd I say Lolly greatly enjoys daily. Mm. <laughs> what? Lollycon. <laughs> your favorite. Oh. Yeah, my favorite. Mmm. Delicious. Yay, children. Hooray, drawn children that are probably about 500 years old in the context of the story, but whatever. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, I prefer yeah, so... children to animals, anyways, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, Why not both? Don't say thank you. Why not both? Eh, why not? YOLO, right? <laughs> YOLO. <laughs> or if you're Sean Bean, YOLOs. You only YOLOs. Live once. So the, the, the purpose I got you guys on together, uh, one, because I thought it would be fun and hilarious and give some fun, candid action for the <laughs> network, which is largely just people bitching about government and people you know, complaining about this, complaining about that in the most dull, monotone way possible. You know, even people like Kathy Reisenwitz and, and some of the other ladies here on the network can't make it as exciting as it probably should be. Um, you know, I want to bring you guys on and kind of get some, get some gaming ideas behind, you know, libertarianism or any kind of, uh, you know, government type stuff that you see in games. That, yeah, you know, is there any games that you've stopped playing because you know, either one of you is like, I hate this government or I hate this government idea. I've personally stopped playing games like Call of Duty and other, uh, you know, first-person shooters like Homefront. I still like play Call of Duty, but not because of that. 
Like, okay, here's how I deal with it, all right? Maybe Matt will agree with me, maybe not, because he has a slightly di different ideology than I do, but I just go, well, okay, it's just a work of fiction, you know? So, but no, Call of Duty is just shit just because it's Call of Duty. There, there's a difference. <laughs> Call of Duty is not shit because it promotes the state. Call of Duty is just shit because it hasn't changed in how many iterations? <laughs> right, I mean, they've got engine upgrades, and that's about it. <laughs> uh, engine upgrades. Somebody, for somebody politically ignorant like me, could you summarize what libertarianism actually is? Sure. I'll, may I? May I? Go for it, Chuck. I'm going to speak in a language Matt understands. You fucking what? Um, you, know, you, you busted. <laughs> um, so basically, libertarianism is in the sense that you leave me alone, I leave you alone, because I have no idea how to run your life, and you have no idea how to run my life. And the same goes with the government, and whether you believe there should be or not, like, I personally believe that there should be no government, so I believe that the only person that knows how to run my life is me. If I need advice, I'll come to you for advice. If I don't need advice, fuck off. Don't tell me who I can and can't marry. Don't tell me what guns I can and can't own. And uh, tell me what plant. Don't tell me what plants I can or cannot enjoy. It sounds like every Facebook post ever. Yeah, pretty much. And and <laughs> now, Grant, there are a couple of different strains of libertarianism. There's uh, party libertarianism, uh, which you may have a sect of that uh, in your country. No, because uh, they're all sheep. Well, you know, <laughs> exactly. So no, sorry, Matt. No, no, no. Rams. No, they have Rams no. over there. No, we're, mm -hmm. no, we're sheep. Because what people f uh, don't seem to forget is that the current party that are in now, we didn't actually vote for. We had an election. They basically, before, like even like halfway through the day, they cut off the polls and basically said on the news, "Well, we decided to fuck the election. Uh, we're just going to join uh, join forces." And then Nick Clegg disappeared. <laughs> Well, that's what, a, what a great story! If that's not if that's not fucking obvious to the people of England that there should be warning bells going off in their heads. I mean, it's not like we're doing any better in the United States, but I mean, come on! At least they try to be a little bit more um, covert about it here. Yeah, be a little bit more white glove about it. I mean, come on now. Be a bit more rubber glove about it. <laughs> no, in England, you guys are just like, you know what? Bend over, fuck this election. We're coming in. <laughs> you know, oh, fisting, yay! And the British people are like, you know, I don't like this, but okay. Thank you, government, for protecting me from the terrorists. Is that so, about it? Thank Just you, kind bloke. Right, pretty well met. So what we're on about is people basically going off games because of like political undertones. Um, sometimes like. And I mean, it. I find myself be, just because I've I've become more politically aware, and you know, being that I'm trying to live as much the non-aggression principle as possible, and I know that's almost impossible with any video game. You know, Grand Theft Auto I still love, and you are nothing but a rapist and murderer 99 percent of the time in that game. But at least there, I have the choice to be good or evil. And these government fund well, they're not government funded necessarily, but. Uh, like these military shooters and stuff like that, and I, I see all these stereotypes and all this statist propaganda, uh, or statism is you know basically being a person who supports government, big government, that kind of thing, uh, kind of layman's terms for you. You know, I just I'm turned off to that kind of stuff anymore. Uh, you know, first person shooters are kind of cool, but it's also not my bread and butter. I can't really play those very well. I am honestly shit at first person shooters, except for Halo. I'm halfway decent, but I'm still garbage compared to all my friends. I prefer sports games and Minecraft and GTA because there's got so much playability over and over and over. It's a slightly different experience every time. As opposed to a first-person shooter, I mean, you can shoot the same guy in the head the same way six different times. Well, hold on. Hold on. I would argue for first-person shooters that there are games like uh, that keep it interesting, like Natural Selection and Natural Selection 2, where you have a commander and one side's the aliens, and they're all biting you and shit, and then the next minute you're a marine, and you're shooting them. But for me, it's less that um, status propaganda normally won't turn me off from a game. I just, you know, am able to understand that it's still fiction, and it, it's in no way. I'm not going to let it dictate in any way how I feel about politics, and I just enjoy it for what it is, a video game, you know? Right. And then that's not to say that the people who are making the game are horrible people, or uh, that the game franchise Unless is you were for evil. Or EA, 
Well, you know. <laughs> but that's on a whole different level of bullshit and shenanigans, mm-hmm. which we can't get into if you want to. Or, uh, or even Ubisoft, now, up-and-coming new EA people. Bye, yeah. Matt. I'm here. I'm just turning on my light. Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> running away, eh? <laughs> he can't handle all the politics. He's too British. <laughs> He's afraid. He's afraid that like GCHQ is gonna like break down his door and be like, Arr! and then we can watch him get arrested live. Is, is that the noise they make, Matt? Nah, it's more like a Nigel Thornberry like smashing the like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then they throw crumpets at you, right? Yeah. Crumpets, and if Crumpet. they're really serious, they'll like throw like sharpened monocles. <laughs> no, they're crumpet. They're frag crumpets. So you, you toss them and then they explode into like, like searing hot butter. Yes, yeah, and dough. Well, actually, a good question. I just thought up now. Um, you know, in the U- in in England, uh, is is there any major differences that you find in games as compared to stuff that comes out in the U.S.? I know Australia heavily edits some of their games and their contents. Germany uh, too, and Germany as well. Do you find any kind of weird edits or cuts in in your games, or is it? Largely the no, same as the U.S. No, it's it's largely the same compared to uh, the U.S. If if something is found controversial over there, it's found con- controversial over here. Okay. So it's not like uh, it's not like Australia where it's actually really hard to get a hold of some games. Mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat. Remember back then? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, we refuse to rate this, and that's partially. You know, I talked about an episode of that. You know, on um, Liberty Geek, but um, you know. Australia has a rule where if if the state-run ratings board does not rate your video game, you just can't sell it. Tough shit. And that's why I'm an anarcho-capitalist, Matt, because that wouldn't happen. So how often has there been a game that's come out, you know, maybe in the last decade or so, that got Firestorm that it got banned in the UK or uh, at least was heavily touched up? Or was there any kind of major big government to do about any particular game or franchise recently? Uh, I think just about every GTA game that's come out, the media has tried to you know, have a pop at. But it's, it's always just people just like, oh, fuck, shut up. And they just ignore it. And then they realize, oh well, we're not going to you know, succeed there. Because all it really is is they're trying to basically focus all this bad media attention through the mothers and fathers are concerned and like, oh my god, should I really be thinking about this? So, you know, but nah, it's. I think we're all just so like, yeah, whatever. That it just doesn't last very long. Do you like, think that's an issue in your country about like, you guys are so yeah, whatever about not just that, but like politics in general, from like the way everything you've described to me before, you know, when I've been talking to you, and just now, you guys are so yeah, whatever about everything, like. Is there anything it's, your government couldn't get away with? When it comes, no, it's when it comes to like games, we realize it's just it's stupid. Why, why are you even trying to bring this, this to our attention? If you don't like that kind of thing, don't play it. If you're worried about your kids playing it, play the game before they do. If your 14-year-old's got a hold of an 18-year-old game, that's on you. You're the parent. But when it comes to like something that really affects everybody, like there were riots at one point just because um student loan fees and, sorry, uh, tuition fees for going into university tripled a few years ago. And uh, I'm one of the people actually has to pay, instead of £3,000 a year tuition, I have to pay £9,000 a year tuition. Tripled? uh, How did that come about? They just snapped the finger and said it's happening. And there were were riots in the streets, uh, there there were protests, uh, but um, the government literally just sat in their buildings and didn't do anything. They said, well, they have to go back to their lives in maybe a week or so, because they have to eat. And to basically yeah. wait, wait, does, that scare you? does that scare you as a citizen? Or not yeah. even as a citizen, as a person, does that scare you? As a person, yeah, it scares me because it means the country is never going to get better and it means that the government is never truly going to listen to, uh, you know, the average Joe, the middle class people that actually know what it's like to live like this rather than the one percenters <laughs> that are sitting there, sitting comfy no matter what happens to them. But for well, us, it's like, well, it's like, well, actually, that... if you... If you're raising tuition fees to nine thousand pounds a year, I know there's like payment schemes in in the like 
for like after you've graduated and stuff like depending on how much you earn a year you pay that much back and even if you don't haven't paid it all back after 25 years it gets wiped out completely but even then it's going to make it much harder and more daunting for people who say want to become doctors so I wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me down the line in maybe 10 years or so if we have a shortage of doctors and stuff like that so Perfect. I, I... I guess my question is, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm completely ignorant on things across the pond uh, outside of, you know, maybe one or two things. I know of, like, Nigel Farage or whatever. He's essentially the Ron Paul of, of England. Who the fuck's uh, that? I don't even know who that is. Oh! He, he got big in the news during the Paul campaign because he was saying a lot of similar things to Ron Paul, but that's neither here nor there at this point. But is the education system completely state-funded? Is there any private colleges that were affected by this, or is it just, hey, government said, boom, 3,000 to 9,000? Or how uh, does think, that work? I think these days, um, only your primary education, and se uh, so primary school, secondary school, all the ones before them, like, you know, kindergarten, if, as you guys would call it, and I think even, I think now, I think college is mandatory as well, so that's all um, funded by the government, as long as, I think at college, as long as you're under 18, it's free. Or if you've only done like a certain level of course, you can get like first full level of whatever course you're doing entitlement. Like I was able to go back to college and take art because I have never done a level three course before, so I was entitled to that for free. But uh, as far as university goes, you do have to take out a shit ton of loads and put yourself in debt for life, and that uh, that's what they tripled. Right. Wow. So that's. I mean, that in itself shows uh, government corruption at its finest. I mean, I'm, I'm against compulsory education. I think if a child, uh, you know, obviously education is important. Uh, there is no reason why, you know, a young child shouldn't be schooled by either their parents or somebody they trust uh, or somebody who is actually good at what they do when it comes to teaching. Uh, but, you know, once you hit your mid-teens where you can possibly just go out and get a job and, you know, make some money, you know, if yeah. you don't have any particular skills in, in music, in art, in math, science, writing, wanting to be a teacher or whatever, just go and fucking work and make some money. You shouldn't be forced to sit in the classroom for, you know, literally 20 years of your life uh, yeah. just to get some worthless piece of paper that is becoming more and more devalued the more people have it. Because, you know, back in even the early 1900s, if you had a degree, if you had even a, a bachelor's degree, you were top shit. I mean, you were somebody that was really someone to, to behold. You were an expert almost. Once you got your master's and PhD, my God, you were king of the world in your area. If you, if somebody had a question on theology, on science, on, on math or whatever, they'd come to you. And now everybody and their mother can get a doctorate in math if, you got, if you're so inclined. And it, it makes it almost meaningless now. Yeah. Do you find that to be the case, Matt? Well... 14-year-old me would have completely agreed with you, but because I'm 25 now, I actually really value my education. Like, I'm go actually coming into uni as a mature student, and but I, I feel like because I'm coming into as a mature student, I'm actually capable of doing the work, and I really value what I'm learning and the opportunity to actually go back and do all that. Because uh, at one point when I was in a full-time job working in a factory, I thought, well, this is it, this is my life. But as soon as I was able to go back, that was it. It was like, wow, it's it's going to look up. I'm not going to be stuck in a dead-end job. I can work to something I actually want to do, even if I am getting in debt for the rest of my life. But um, I will agree with you that, at, so, um, at least in secondary and primary school, the the education system is a bit Nazi-like, because um, uh, near the time where we were taking our exams called GCSEs, or when I was taking my GCSEs, uh, I don't know what you uh, call them over there. ACTs, maybe? Is that the SATs, yeah. Is it is it like a is it like a college like an exam to see like what it's it's, it's like it's the uh, make your life or break your life exam at the end of high school. Yeah, it, we call oh, it. Okay. We have ACTs and SATs. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's that. And um, it was it wasn't really like any lessons were going on. It was more like study your damn fucking hardest so that you can pass this exam. And my parents wanted to take me and my family to the Caribbean so that we could basically have a little holiday and sort of, you know, uh, make our revisions and study in our own time there and like in relative relaxation on a holiday. But um, the tutors wouldn't let me do it. Or we, I did it anyway. But um, there was 
basically threatening my uh, mum and dad that they were going to like send them fines because if your child here, if they miss too much school, the school can fine you for some reason. Mm, and now you see why I'm an anarchist, Matt? Maybe. Yeah. I Maybe. Wish it was like that, but it's like, well, they're our parents, so surely they know best. They know what they want for us, rather than some teacher that's been told, okay, this is how everybody has to do it. And that's 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 assuming your parents are complete shit for brains and you know abusive <laughs> assholes. Now I you know I don't know about your situation, but I'd assume that your parents are you know good people that they they didn't abuse you and they weren't you know complete. Fucktards. Uh, Just when so. we weren't looking. <laughs> oh, no, whenever I actually had a question, you no, know, they were like, oh, "Yeah, very proper, very proper." And turn around, like, <laughs> 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 he, you know, every um, having, I've actually talked to his mom before, and I could totally see that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my dad's been um, a factory worker for as long as I can remember. Uh, my mom's always uh, been a nurse. So no, they're not complete fuckwits. And my dad did that. Saying he's a factory worker, he's he's quite high in the chain. Oh, God, God damn it, man! I'm not, all I can think of now is just <laughs> <laughs> no. But you have to do the motion with it too, you know. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> let me put my drink down. Here, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah. So basically, everything you just described to Adam and I. Is basically where we would say, um, well, in a in a free society, in an ANCAP society, that wouldn't really happen, you know, because in an ANCAP society, you could choose without any government mandate, you could choose how much schooling you want when you've had enough and you say, you know what, fuck this, I want to keep working, or you know what, I think I can handle more and go farther without some assholes sitting in an office fining you because oh, you missed too many days of school. And you know, and I mean, well, and what we got to take mind here is we've got we got parents who you know I would make the argument that all of us value education in some level or another. You know, I think you know obviously a college degree in some fields, you know, being a doctor, being a, a lawyer, or things of that nature. Yeah, go to school for that shit. Uh, if you're oh, going yeah. to school for music like I am, I mean, I'm going for a vocal performance degree. I've got the fucking skills right here in my damn throat. I can go and just buy a private tutor, a private teacher for voice lessons and do that for the rest of my life, save myself some cash, and still have a potentially good career. Yeah. But most of these opera companies... Almost I mean, Matt's... I think, the paper I, to think, come in. I think if anybody knows what you just said better, it's, it, hopefully it's Matt, because he's an artist. And yeah. a game yeah, designer. It's... it's uh, I don't know. It's, you can have the raw skill, but even if you're like... In most pl in most cases, anyway, you can be shit hard at what you do, but they aren't even going to take a second look at you without the piece of paper that says you can do it. But in a free society that might, which we that which we advocate for, that could change, you know. Right. I mean, that's not to say that you know all of these diplomas and these pieces of paper that give you certification aren't worth something. Uh, but like I said, we've so saturated the market with everybody almost being forced to have a certificate uh, of some kind of diploma just to get a job. I mean, there's offices, you know, places where you're literally just doing data entry. You're punching in numbers, you're punching in letters and stuff into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you know, if you've got even basic knowledge of how to type, you can get in these jobs, but some of these require bachelor's degrees or master's degrees for entry-level positions. Yeah. Well, uh -uh. That's, I'm, no, that's I'm shenanigans. Getting a, I'm getting a bachelor's degree now in game design, but even after I've graduated, I'll probably still at least have to spend my first nine months doing Q&A, like running into tables, like to see if they don't glitch out and make everything explode. <laughs> right. Well, and and you're in an interesting market too because you're going into game design and 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 that sort of thing. And I don't think there is really that big of a a chunk of people. I mean, there there's thousands of people around the world who are making these games and all over, you know, doing all sorts of crazy things. Some of which have certificates of proof of I can do this, and some just did it. Uh, you know, your your certificate or your diploma is going to be good. It's going to give you this, you know, hey, this gravitas. I can do this shit. Here's what I can do, and I want to learn how you know company X Y Z uh, wants to you know employ me to use this, that, or the other thing. Because you'll learn on the job, obviously. I mean, you know that. 
um, or whatever particular system a pr uh, particular firm wants to use. But I know, it's it's one of those things that we don't think anything should be mandatory for education, and it should be mostly on the parents to try to to push uh, their children to get educated because. Obviously, you got a you got a ten year old who doesn't know how to read, write, or talk, or uh, they're complete morons rolling in the dirt. Uh, that doesn't bode well for that kid later on in life. So it's it's good for the parents to get their kids educated. And we can get into this whole convoluted thing about dispute resolution organizations and insurance companies and stuff, and how they might not cover a particular family if their child isn't educated or if they're not educated to a certain level. But that's a topic for another day. Um, so what is it with game design that you're wanting to do, and you know, is there anything that uh, the government is using to you know, impede or help uh, the industry you're wanting to get into? The only thing they've really <clears throat> done to impede it is literally just raise the tuition fees, because that really impedes everything, because this day and age, you need that. But, um... Oh, hang on. Um... One second. Yeah. All right. So while he's doing that, um, I guess I would point out that um, you know, he's new to the movement. <clears throat> oh yeah. <laughs> no, but um, but you know. Hang on. Sorry about that. Someone was knocking on my door. Hmm. You're. I want to give you some bangers and mash. I've already eaten my bangers and mash. Thank you. <laughs> so you fucking what? You talking <laughs> shit about his dinner, mate? I've eaten my dinner. It was delicious. <laughs> okay, the question was... I, f I forgot the question, Adam. Uh, more or less, what uh, was what has government done to impede or help uh, the gaming industry or the game design industry? Uh, and he was saying how the only thing they've really done to impede anything uh, is to just raise the tuition, tuition rate, which, yeah. which, which hurts yeah. him and anybody else who wants to get into any kind of educational anything for learning anything at all. Yeah, because, as I said, you need, like, that bachelor's degree or some kind of qualification to get into anything, but because that's been made more expensive to do, it's making it harder for people to get into that, sort of. Uh, but as, like, directly, like, towards, like, gaming companies, I don't think they've really done much to try and impede them. If anything, it's just how everything has to, has slowly been, like, increasingly been getting more politically correct. Like, um, before, I'd say recently, you'd never see a game where a child has died in game. But uh, I think it's also kind of good for the uh, the games industry because they kind of take it as a challenge. Like, right, what can we get away with in this one? Right, and you know, one thing I've always hated is censorship because it might offend somebody. Uh, you know, we've we just talked. You know, the last time I did a show with. With Chuck, we talked about Lollicon and and you know children animations or things that resemble children, even if they're five thousand year old monsters, you know, going at it, having sex and all that kind of fun kinky stuff. Hey. Uh, you know, hey. sometimes some stories require a kid to die or a, an adult to die in this brutal fashion, or this person to get raped, or that person to get run over by a tank, or this thing with uh, no body, two arms, two legs, and a head to you know, explode into a thousand pieces. Uh, Berserk anyone? Like, literally? That fucking manga? Just, yeah. Exactly. You, you need a child to die. Here's fucking Berserk! <laughs> <laughs> no, that, for some reason, that reminded me of a rather sick manga I started reading and then had to stop. What? Uh, it was called The Arm of Cannon. K-A-N-O-N. <laughs> exactly what you're talking about. And it's how like, this guy, this kid's father was infected with a demon and he passed it on to his son by sodomizing him. <laughs> yes. We're laughing then, about that now, I, but no. I didn't get past that book. <laughs> I was Adam like, oh, is, well. Adam is this, speechless. This took a slightly too dark turn, so I'm going to put this away. <laughs> Oh, but you know, imagine if the if the Japanese government had, had their way, you know. That's oh. enough internet for the day. <laughs> <laughs> but if the Japanese government had their way, that that never would have happened. That would have been banned, and you never would have been able to read that brilliance. I mean, let me ask you this. I, I'm pretty sure it's still in the pile over here somewhere. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Show it. Show it. 
Well, do you want me to show you, find the scene if I can? No, not the scene. Just, just show the us. Book. The yeah. Well, if you want to, I don't care about you know throwing it out there. Although yeah, I might get hit with a copyright strike if I'm not careful. Until the VVN gets uh gets their uh. Yeah, I don't think Michael Shakelin would be happy with you when he loses his channel because Matt did that. <laughs> this is it. This is a uh, the arm of cannon. It's about a kid that gets sodomized by his dad and becomes a <laughs> demon king of some kind. <laughs> because he got sodomized. I feel like we need to give you some homework and make you finish reading that. <sighs> and review it. Yeah. Review it and the look at it from a libertarian perspective. <laughs> And, and review it as a libertarian. So if I was a libertarian, how would imp I improve this rape scene? <laughs> <laughs> well, I found, I found the page right here. Here it is. There's, there's a picture of his dad turning into the demon, then bending his son over, who is curiously <laughs> and suddenly naked. <laughs> well, then. Is, it, is this video getting edited, or is this live? Oh, it's, it's live, edited, but it so. will be edited. Oh, well. yeah. Here you go, guys. The kid getting sodomized. <laughs> Well then. Thank, thank you, Matt. For, um... <laughs> well, see if I can figure out how to do it like a black bar right down that shit. Thank you, Voluntary Virtues Network. You guys have uh, learned enough liberty for today. Um, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Bye bye. We're out. No, we're <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Shanklin. I don't know who Michael Shanklin's gonna kill first. You or me? Because he's my uh, friend. But you're the one that want to interview him. Ignoring that actually side of it, it's not a bad story if you tr just in your head repress that very memory in that page. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, uh, I mean, we really haven't hit too many terrible topics, which is good. I mean, we're running running out of time for the Voluntary Virtues Network part of the interviews. Uh, so, you guys have any final thoughts, Matt? You got any kind of political anything's that you want to bitch about for thirty seconds? Uh, political anything's. No, not yeah. really. I think I've pretty much said my piece on it. Well, I'll... Bedroom tax. It, how bedroom it's... tax. Yeah, bedroom tax. Basically, our government is stupid, and we just we can't do anything about it. Well, either we can't slash won't do anything about it, just because we have shit to do. And it scares you. Yeah, because it means that we're never. It means that things are never going to get better. Hey, I can Fair finish enough. this thought. Time is twin. Yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see what kind of uh, got any wrap up thoughts for anything, Chuck. Otherwise, I'm um, going to sign off for the VVN network, and we'll continue on with our other shenanigans here. Um, I guess my only uh, thought is to watch the Atlantic Bromance and definitely watch Liberty Geek right here on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Yeah, um, you're damn right. You're damn right. Go we and hit about... rewatch on the Lollicon episode. Yeah, we, 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 talk about, we talk about Lollicon, bitch! <laughs> I, I might throw in a little annotation right here if I can remember how to do the edit for that uh, so you can go back to that episode for Chuck. And I'll throw in somewhere over this way an annotation to go and check out tab The Atlantic Bromance. Uh, we will... If you go and watch... Click this annotation right down here. I can't get my orientation on the fingers right. There we go. We will be able to kick over to my personal channel, Liberate the Republic, uh, so you can see the rest of this wonderful, wonderful shenanigans. This is Adam Brod of Liberationist Republic I signing off from the VVN Network, saying peace and love and liberty, y'all. Anarchy! Bye. Is that okay? Is that okay, Master? Is that okay, Master? It's okay. I'm not jealous or anything, Baka. <laughs> <laughs> oh,